Hey everybody, it's Dustin again with the WebEx Devices team. And today I'm excited to give you an update on what's new in Room OS for February, 2021. Now you may have noticed, uh, or maybe not, but just to kind of give you uh, an idea of what we're doing now is um, we, we basically do a software release roughly every 30 days. And starting this year, we've decided to change up kind of the cadence of how we're gonna do this to be a little more structured. So for example, we aim to release the software for the month at the first of the month. So sometime within the first to second week of January, February, in this case, we released uh, Room OS uh, for February last week. And um, in doing that, that gives us some time to get the software out um, and let it to kind of propagate global, globally uh, and make sure it's on enough devices. Then what we've decided to do is do a monthly release schedule for all features. So rather than just releasing features as they become available, uh, we decided to consolidate, do a release monthly uh, on the 15th of the month on average. Um, it may be a little bit later than that, depending on what day the 15th falls. Uh, for example, we're not going to release features on a Saturday, um, but if it's the on a Monday, like today, then um, we will release a bunch of features, uh, which is kind of why I'm doing this video today. So um, you're going to see uh, in the Room OS blog coming up uh, over the next couple of days and then in the What's New on uh, uh, Room OS uh, and help.webex.com. Um, you'll start to see all of these new features that are being available. And um, again, just to level set, I want to make sure we understand that um, there's a common misconception that um, I have X version of software, therefore I should get B feature or C feature, or whatever. Um, while that is fundamentally somewhat true, um, there is uh, an instance where you may have the right software version, but the feature may not be administratively uh, enabled. Uh, so this is a great example here where uh, the software that was installed starting last week uh, on stable channel throughout the, the world uh, globally, um, those features were capable, but they weren't um, enabled until today. And so that's what I want to start doing as well. So subscribe if you haven't, because uh, not only do you get to see some of these features that I'm going to talk about and get a little early preview, um, this will be a monthly uh, video that I'll do as well to kind of go over all of these features and just go a little more in depth to them uh, based off of what you're reading from the um, alerts. But it lets you kind of know what's available, and I'll talk a little bit about the feature to give you a better understanding. Of course, as always, if you have any questions, just reach out below uh, or reach me one-on-one -on, -one on WebEx and uh, we'll see if we can't get you squared away. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, the very first thing we're going to talk about here is something that if you've been subscribed to the channel, you've already seen a little demo on, but it's the WebEx uh, meetings for Edge. So this is the native WebEx experience for Edge devices. So if you have an Edge device and you opt into this, it requires um, or allows you to opt into the, uh, the cloud upgrades and you can opt in for this experience. What it's going to do is allow you to um, have your devices that are still registered to call manager or VCS, whatever you have for your on-prem call control. But now you get all of the advanced control hub features and some of the advanced in-meeting experiences that you would get only with a fully cloud registered device. So for example, we mentioned here, um, you know, uh, bi-directional whiteboarding, so two-way whiteboard. If I have a WebEx board or a Desk Pro, for example, that is on-prem, but I'm uh, Edge registered, and I also have the native uh, WebEx meetings experience. When I join WebEx meetings, I join uh, very similar, almost exactly similar actually, to the um, uh, a cloud device, in which case I get all of those same cloud capabilities. So I can now do two-way whiteboarding. I can now do some of the advanced mute, mute all um, and advanced layout controls, things like that, that I would not typically have on premise if I was joined being uh, via a standard SIP connection. So um, this is something that is now available to everyone. Um, it's actually been kind of soft release for a while. I talked about it in our video that I did, uh, kind of demonstrating a little bit or talking about it a little more in depth. Um, but this is now available and a lot of the features that were part of it um, have been turned on or available as well. So check that out. If you have any questions, let me know. Moving forward, I want to talk a little bit about, uh, about a couple other uh, neat features that are now GA. Um, so first of all, transfer host. This is a great feature that allows you to uh, either make host or co-host another person um, that is on your participant list that's in a meeting. Typically, this is something that you could only do from the client itself, but now you have those same capabilities on um, your, uh, your video unit. So this can be done where example here is a Desk Pro. It could also be any other device that you're paired to or joined to. Um, but um, essentially, again, before you had this from the client, so it's a nice, easy way for you to be able to add those features or, or add those um, roles to people um, from the device itself without having to open up or, or use your client if it's not readily available. So it just kind of adds a little bit more um, 
ease um, in case you um, you know, or kind of do something last minute or ad hoc or just hopping into a room. Now it's going to give you uh, just more options to be able to give those host privileges or presenter privileges um, from the device itself. Um, moving forward, uh, also we have the request to unmute, which uh, goes GA today. Um, so this is um, a way for you to be able to request a user or everyone to be able to unmute. Uh, you see here in this example dialogue that you've got uh, the ability to request unmute. So whether they're on a device or on a client, they will be prompted with a little message saying, hey, you've been asked to unmute yourself. Um, obviously, you can still ask the person directly if you want to have them unmute, but this is just another uh, cool, neat feature, uh, which gives a nice uh, little alert to allow people or ask people to be able to uh, unmute themselves. So available today, definitely give that a try. We've also released today the ability to have closed captioning uh, on devices. So this is a very neat feature that we're very excited about. Now, the one thing I do want to mention here is that um, this is easy to turn on, um, and I will be doing a video on this to kind of show this specifically. But um, the other features we've uh, mentioned to, to this point, there are definitely videos here. So just, uh, you know, just search the channel and you'll be able to uh, kind of see how those work uh, a little more in depth. But with closed captioning, um, simply what happens here is, is if WebEx Assistant is enabled in the meeting, and there's two ways to do this. It can either be enabled automatically, uh, being able to do closed captioning, take notes, things of that nature, um, or it has to be manually turned on per meeting. Um, but once it's turned on or enabled, any user, whether they're a, a guest or a host or a co-host, will be able to actually toggle on closed captioning for the device uh, themselves. So they'll just hit the little WebEx Assistant icon, which will come up and there'll be a little toggle. You just toggle on closed captioning. And just like that, you're gonna start seeing the closed captioning uh, at the bottom of the screen. So again, this is available today. So if you have this and you have WebEx Assistant, definitely turn it on, give it a try. Um, and um, this is uh, a very, uh, very exciting feature, something that's been asked for uh, quite a lot. Um, so now, we're going to move on to web apps and call. Now, I'm excited about this one. I've actually done a demo video of this one a long time ago. We've uh, taken a while to get this one out. Um, but what I wanted to do here was kind of talk to you about uh, web apps and call. So this is available today. But one thing that um, you need to know is, is that um, you have to uh, have this only on devices that currently support what we call true web apps. So that's going to be a board, something that's interactive, or a desk pro. Um, what will happen here is, is that you go into Control Hub, you set up the web app, or you can set it locally on the device. And when you go to set up that uh, app, you can actually choose to make it available when it's out of a call or when it's uh, also in a call. If you do say it's available in call, whenever you're actually in a call, you can press your menu or your touch panel or your board, and you'll be able to launch that app from uh, the device while you're in the call. What will happen there is, is the web engine will launch up. You will see that and everyone that's remote will see it as a content channel share. So as you interact with that, they'll be able to see it live. One thing that we know here that's kind of neat is, is that while the app itself is not two way interactive, meaning that someone on a far end device couldn't go up and interact with your share, uh, what the far end or participants that are in the call could do is bring up that website. And if it is a um, collaborative application, like uh, we'll say Microsoft PowerPoint, for example, online, they could be making changes, and as they make those changes, those changes would show on that share. So definitely a really neat use case here um, and uh, excited about it. So give it a try. Let us know if you have any feedback or questions on it. Uh, but that also is available today. Now, this one, my absolute probably favorite feature uh, of all time. Um, we've had a lot of requests for this, and I've waited a long time to be able to um, uh, say this, but now standard layouts for WebEx boards are, uh, it's GA. Everybody can do this now. Uh, for a long time, we've had a very kind of wonky, uh, special layout, active craziness on the boards. And um, now everybody has the opportunity to have just standard, simple layouts, just like the rest of the portfolio. Um, this is um, probably definitely my favorite feature of the year. Um, and I'm sure a lot of people are going to be excited about it. I've also done a video on this one, so uh, just check the list and the channel here and you can go on and see uh, me interacting with this and showing it kind of uh, real time, a little more in depth. A uh, few things to note, um, you can do it from touching the, uh, the self view uh, on the board itself, or if you have a touch 10 or navigator attached to it, you'll be able to use the layouts there, very similar, almost exactly like you would uh, with um, uh, a regular room system, for example. 
Um, I do want to say that um, the note that uh, the transcoded meetings will get the five by five. And if you're on the switched or uh, the multi-stream meetings today for cloud, um, it will still be limited to four by four. We are looking to expand that to five by five uh, in the near future. And then when you do have that, that'll automatically just be an upgrade that you'll see available to you. Um, and uh, if you have more questions around what's the difference between transcoded or switch, just let me know and we'll see if we can't uh, do either another video more specifically on that or we can answer it in the chat down below. But again, hooray, I'm very happy. Uh, we now have standard layouts for the board series. Uh, moving forward, so i uh, done a video on this, but shape recognition is now available to everyone. Uh, had been an EFT, we've had some great success and feedback. So uh, when you use your desk pro or your board, definitely give this a try to be able to uh, turn on the ability to recognize your shapes and kind of make uh, better shapes for you. Uh, if you're someone like me who has absolutely no um, artistic capabilities whatsoever, this is a, a very nice feature. It really makes me uh, much better whenever I'm doing my whiteboarding or trying to uh, do some thought processes and whatnot on uh, on the board. Um, so we do support uh, squares, circles, triangles, and rectangles today. Um, stay tuned. There's a lot of exciting stuff happening uh, with whiteboard in general, including additional shape recognition. Um, so um, as those are available to preview, if you subscribe to the channel, you're going to see some early previews of that. And uh, we'll talk more about that down the road. But everybody has shape recognition available today. So as I've been saying, give it a try. Okay, and the last thing we're gonna talk about here is the improved share behavior on the Desk Pro. So now we've had a lot of uh, kind of feedback and some information on this. I have done a video on this as well. So definitely take some time to look at it to get a better idea of how this is going to work. But um, we've kind of been changed and improved the overall share behavior on the Desk Pro. So uh, what we wanted to do is make it easier for you to be able to see your computer screen if you're using this um, and be able to maximize that content and make it a little easier to understand when you're actually sharing or whether you're just previewing and being able to handle content if it's being shared, minimize one, minimize the other. Um, it's just it's a different workflow. Uh, it's hard to talk through over video, but uh, the best thing to do would be to go back and watch the video where I demonstrated it and you were able to see um, how those worked. Um, so do that, give it a try uh, and see if uh, you like this improved share workflow better. I know that we like it a lot better ourselves um, and uh, based on feedback so far, I think uh, you guys are gonna really enjoy and like it. So that too is available today. Now, with that being said, that's pretty much uh, all the features that we're gonna talk about with the new Room uh, OS release for February. Again, everything we just discussed here today is released as of today. So make sure your devices are updated. And uh, if you have any questions, just let me know below. Um, we might be looking at doing some other videos or adding on to this afterwards to kind of give you a sneak peek or, or preview of what's coming up in the next month. So stay tuned. We're gonna look at doing one uh, maybe in the next week or so as to what's coming in March. Uh, but if not, um, stay tuned and just look for around the March 15th, 16th time frame, and we'll have this same type of video and we'll go over everything that we released in March. So thanks for watching. Again, subscribe. If you have any questions, just let us know. Thanks.